Hello again, everybody, and welcome to Golden Moments. I'm Bruce Howard, and we come to you from the floor here at the Reynolds Center, where it's hard to believe 20 years ago, the University of Tulsa men's basketball team lost a heartbreaker in the Western Athletic Conference Tournament Finals to the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors, denying TU a chance for another NCAA berth. That was disappointing. But that 2001 team turned disappointment into destiny as they won Tulsa's second National Invitation Tournament Championship. Free throw off the rim, no good. Rebound, Shelton, ball game over. I know the fans are disappointed and shocked they felt Tulsa would win this basketball game. When the buzzer went off at the Rental Center the night of March 10th, 2001, it was a dispirited feeling, a quiet sound, interrupted only by the celebration of the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors who had beaten the Golden Hurricane in overtime in the WAC championship game. That loss meant TU would not go to the NCAA tournament, heartbreaking to a program that had been to the big dance six out of seven years, including three Sweet 16s and an Elite Eight. It, like I said, it was a really tight game, a really tough game, and we all, like I said, we all wanted it so badly, but um, just one of those things that didn't work out the way we wanted to. I know that was, I still remember that was a tough night after losing that game. I'll say after the game was, was really disappointing. I'm, uh, the fact that we were even in the NIT tournament, like I'm surprised because everybody seemed like they were, I don't know, I guess our ego, our pride was kind of taking over, like, hey, we don't want to play in that. We We just came from almost making it to the Elite Eight the previous year. It's uh, one of those tough losses that I think about uh, that really still kind of haunts me. A jagged regular season in Buzz Peterson's only year doomed to use chances for an at-large berth. So now the Hurricane pivots to the NIT, not the result they wanted, but the question would be, how would they react? Those first couple practices were a struggle because guys' heads were still down, but um, Eventually, we looked at it as another opportunity to continue to play with each other and to, and to get better. From a senior standpoint, you're able to play more games. You're, you're able to get more opportunities to get looked at. And I'll say that was probably the decision that led us to, to plan the tournament. In what would turn out to be the only home game in the NIT for Tulsa, the Hurricane played host to Cal Irvine, the Anteaters. The whack hangover was evident as TU fell behind by as many as 20 points in the first half. That was a competitive group. Like I say, if, if the season was going to end, it wouldn't, it wouldn't have been easy like that with us losing by 20 points. So I'll say just that, that competitive nature, especially from the seniors too, not wanting to go out like that, that kind of kicked in. No matter how you can get a win at this time of year, uh, whether you have to come back or, or speak out a close game, um, uh, we were prepared for just about anything. We had, a, a, like I said, a veteran group of guys, so we were, we, it just took us a minute to wake up and we were ready to go after that. Also leading 75-71, off to Reed with one second left. He'll shoot one at the buzzer that goes in and out, and this one is over. TU wins. 75-71 over Irvine, and the Hurricane advance to play another day. So the Hurricane survived and beat Cal Irvine by four, and then began a remarkable road odyssey. First, head north to Minneapolis, Minnesota to take on the Minnesota Gophers out of the Big Ten. I recall the atmosphere. They had a different kind of little setup in their gym where, I don't know, we were sitting down and looking up on the course. That was pretty cool, and I think that was another one of those games we kind of took a big lead at one point in the game and then kind of fell asleep and they came back on us and made it a tight game. I remember the the, the court was was kind of where or just when they sit lower that's the only thing I really remember but I say it was fun up there that the away games kind of made the journey more fun just I mean going to other people's places and win is I don't know it's a little better feeling than winning at home. At Minnesota, center Kevin Johnson made one of the most iconic plays in TU history, not only blocking a shot, but simply catching it. I don't remember where I was, but you know, I, I remember, uh, you know, KJ would, would uh, catch, sneak, catch guys off guard like that a lot, because he's only about six, 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 seven. so sometimes guys would go in there and think they could finish, and he just jump up there and snatch it out the air sometimes, I, uh, but I remember that was a, a big, big play for us, a momentum changer. And, TU survives an overtime thriller against Minnesota. So it was back to Tulsa and hopefully another home game? But no, with only one day in between, the NIT sends TU to Starkville, Mississippi to take on the SEC's Mississippi State Bulldogs. Travel to Starkville was so difficult that the Hurricane flew in on a charter the day of the game in Starkville. We did have to take that flight the day of the game. I remember uh, that the hotel we stayed at, it, was, it wasn't the greatest. 
And I, I remember the pregame meal. I remember a lot of guys were like, what are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing right now? But, but um, it, it just showed the toughness of that group. That was probably the toughest crowd. You know, I, I, I like to hear it, but you just hear that <laughs> when you're going in there, the fans are barking at you. That was probably one of the most exciting games on, on the journey. Just like you said, just, just us being on the road, not having many fans to support us, just having that bench there. That quarterfinal matchup in Starkville came down to the last moments, tied at 75. Shelton out front to Hill, five seconds left, a dump down to Harrington, five footer good, with 2.6 seconds left. Tulsa wins, Tulsa wins, 77-75. Start spreading the news, folks. <laughs> New York, New York. I just remember having to try to make something happen, it was a tie game. I think Marcus might have got it and took a good couple dribbles and got got stuck and found me in the corner and somehow I was just able to turn turn around and put it in for the win. So it was a, it was an exciting game. I just remember Greg making it, making that floater. And I said that I remember us celebrating that in the locker room. I said that was that was a good time after that game. I, I think we got even closer. Like let's go ahead and finish this off. So after beating Mississippi State and getting back to Tulsa. It was now on to New York City and the NIT semifinals. Exciting. I know for me, man, coming from Wagner, small town. I know even though we've, we've been some places that previous year, but going to New York, playing, playing at Madison Square, man, that's, that's amazing. Just just a lot of getting out and sightseeing. You know, for me, it was just crazy how many people just out in the streets, you know. Um, just I, I would just go outside by myself and walk around and, just try to take it all in. Uh, a lot of the guys on the team uh, spent their money a little recklessly on some some fake jewelry a few times. <laughs> so that's a funny memory I have from that. But uh, it was it, it was a new experience for a lot of us. Whether it was Times Square, Empire State Building, or fake jewelry, what wasn't fake was the task at hand in playing in the mecca of basketball, Madison Square Garden. I guess me being a guard, a shooter, you want to see where the three-point line is. So, you, so you're getting out there just to see how deep that is. But just looking around, man, thinking about how many people play there, how, how packed it can get, how loud it can get in there, just excites you, get you ready to play. And the semifinal opponent was Memphis, coached by John Calipari in his first year with the Tigers. It's about any game we played, we were always a smaller team, but they had a, a, a really big size advantage on us. But we were able to use that quickness that we had in our shooting. I remember we were defensively, that's how we were kind of just getting out, how we were getting the lead against teams. We, we were playing great defense. I don't know what would happen. I guess it's just, you know, basketball is a game of runs. Uh, we would just have to withstand their run. And, and when we did, we, we were able to finish off the game. Big baskets late by senior David Shelton held Memphis at bay, and Kevin Johnson led the way with 16 points. Marcus Hill had 13, and TU was in the finals. It was, it was real exciting because, like I say, it was just, it wasn't a week or two before with a, with a tournament that just started, and a lot, of, a lot of our guys' heads were down when we first heard the news, so to go from that point and, and to remember that and have that feeling, and then a couple weeks later, we're playing for the, for the championship of the NIT. Let's finish it. You know, especially for the seniors, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're getting an the opportunity to play their last game. Got a lot of people watching. Uh, we got Alabama, we're hearing good things about them. They're supposed to be tough. Uh, but we, we just came out there. I, I think we gave a lot of energy in the first half to kind of really put the game away early. Indeed, in the title game, TU took their customary early big lead, but this time they never let Alabama back in the game in a dominating performance. And I remember that play well because they replayed it a lot that same night, but I remember hitting the ground and just thinking I have to get up. If I lay here too long, I'm, something's going to start hurting, so I popped up off the ground real quick and, and I was able to continue playing. And Harrington and his teammates indeed continued playing, and Marcus Hill was spectacular in his final game with 24 points, including six three-pointers, a special moment for the young man from Tulsa. Right side, Harrington, out front to Hill, open three, on the way, got it! Marcus Hill with a three, and the Hurricane now with a 20-point lead. We prepared ourselves, we had a tough year, we all stuck together, we're a family, nobody could take that from us, and I just give all the credit to God because he brought us through the ups and downs and we just stuck together. For me, at first it was just like, I can't believe this is happening. You know, I'm in Madison Square Garden. My parents are in the crowd. We're cutting down the nets. Man, great. I don't know, like I said, 
it's hard trying to trying to compare it to the to, to the big tournament and the NIT tournament, but it felt just as good. Just as good. You're up cutting down the nets. We just came out, done a heck of a job, we repeated history, and now we bring the NIT championship back home, baby. So after drilling Alabama and winning an NIT championship in New York City, how did the TU guys celebrate? I, I, I think we were just hung around and went to go eat, but we pretty much just hung around the hotel. Uh, we went to McDonald's. We actually saw some of the Alabama players at McDonald's that, uh, that night after the game. And then we just went back to the hotel. We stayed up, just stayed up all night. After their second NIT title, the Hurricane went home, finishing an odyssey that spanned some 4,500 air miles over a 10-day period. For the players that went through that experience, hard to believe it was two decades ago. Gosh, I cannot believe it. <laughs> I don't know, just, I'll, I'll probably see like, I don't know, Greg. When I see Greg, he doesn't, he doesn't seem that old to me, just so. But when, when I come and talk to you and people tell you how long it's been, I'm like, man, it just goes to show you that time flies. It really does. It's amazing, isn't it? Time just flies, you know? 10 years ago, I was like, you know, that didn't seem too long ago. It really still doesn't seem too long ago, but just to think out loud and say it, 20 years ago, we won the NIT and all that happened. Pretty crazy. Rebound chased down by Parker for the Hurricane. Five seconds to a championship. Three, two, one. It's over. Hurricane wins. You can wake the 20 year echoes, folks. 1981. 20 years later, TU does it again. Paul Pressey, Mike Anderson, Phil Spradling, Greg Stewart, David Brown, Ed Lindblad, all of those guys on that team have to have a smile on their face now because Tulsa has gone on a 2001 NIT Odyssey. TU NIT Champions 2001.